What's up, y'all? Hope y'all doing really well. I want to talk to you guys really quickly about a few verses, uh, really quickly. Genesis chapter uh, 31, verses 38 through uh, 42. Um, I just want to give you a little bit of back background, too, as well. Talking about Jacob and Laban. Um, Jacob is the son of Isaac, and he's the grandson of Abraham. Um, also, he is the son of Rebekah as well. Mind you, he um, ended up going to Pada and Ram after he, well, after what he did to Esau, after taking the ble Isaac's blessing away basically from Esau by trying to be Esau. And so as a result, what ended up happening it was Esau was so upset that he was willing and he was ready to kill Jacob. So as a result, Rebecca ended up telling Jacob to go to um, he, Jacob wanted, uh, Rebecca wanted uh, Jacob to go to Padah and Ram to uh, Laban, her brother's home. And mind you, here's the thing, Isaac ended up telling him to do the same. So Isaac ended up telling him to go to Padah and Ram. And then next thing you know, he ended up finding a wife, which ended up being Rachel. Now, in that during that particular time, the he was because he saw Rachel, he was super attracted to her. But the thing is, he ended up having to work to be able to marry Rachel. But before he was able to have Rachel, he ended up having to have Leah because during that particular culture, the younger, the older sibling had to be married before the younger one. And so in the next thing, so what ended up happening was Jacob ended up having to work for Laban for seven years. He ended up got he ended up getting um, Leah. Um, was which was the, I guess the not so attractive one to Jacob. He ended because he wanted Rachel, um, but the end up next thing you know, he ended up having to work even longer to be able to obtain basically for another seven years to obtain Rachel, and then next thing you know, he ended up he was with Rachel. Then next thing you know, they Rachel and Le Rachel and Leah end up competing about who was going to have kids and all these different things to a point where they end up having, they end up having kids themselves. But at the time, initially Rachel wasn't able to have kids. She wasn't able to bear children. And so the next thing you know, she was impatient, which I wouldn't recommend you should have faith and trust God. But then next thing you know, she ended up ha having her female servant marry Jacob and they ended up having children. Next thing you know, Leah, because Leah was able to have children. And so eventually she ended up having a maidservant um, marry Jacob as well. So she can have additional children as well. Next thing you know, they end up having a bunch of children. Mind you, here's the thing that I, I'm, I'm just going to lead up to the where I'm getting to. Then, so mind you, this is the 14 years that they were working, that uh, Jacob was already working. Jacob was planning on leaving to go back to his home country. Laban didn't want him to leave. So as a result, what ended up happening was Jacob ended up caring for Laban's flock for another six years, which was 20 years in total. And as a result, what ended up happening was um, Jacob, ended up, Jacob wanted to leave. Now, mind you, after before. Here's the thing. During this particular time when he was caring for the flock, there was certain it was a certain kind of mating process which enabled him to be able to um, possess this, the speckled, the striped and the it was another one, uh, sheep and goat as well. Um, so end up next thing you know, he ended up getting wealthy because he ended up obtaining a number. Of, he ended up getting wealthy basically from caring for the flocks of Laban. He ended up getting a whole bunch of different sheep and a whole bunch of different goats and things of that sort. And as a result, he ended up being very, very, very wealthy. So he ended up getting the goats, the sheep, female, female and male servants, and even males and camels. As a result, he ended up, Jake Laban ended up getting upset because what ended up happening was Late uh, Jacob and he ended up taking his wives and his possessions and end up leaving. Now, here's the thing though Rachel ended up taking Laban's household idols, which is a problem. God will have no other gods before him. So, here's the thing Laban was a liar, he was greedy, he was an idol worshiper, he was, he was a manipulator. There were so many things about Laban that we should really avoid trying to be like. And I'm going to read you this. Verse 38. 
Genesis chapter 31, verse 38. And it says this, for 20 years, I have been with you. Now, mind you, this is after Laban had plundered through all of Jacob's things, his daughter's things, his family's possessions, because he was trying to find his household idols, which Rachel had taken, like I said before. And mind you, she ended up sitting on the household idols as opposed to being honest, like she should have been. Coming to find out, Jacob ended up getting perturbed and he was he began to correct him. He's like, yo, what are you doing here, bro? What are you doing here? You saw that I haven't taken anything. Why are you still plundering through my stuff? I And then he began to let out his anger, basically. He ended up letting, letting him know how he felt. And this is what verse 38 comes in. For 20 years, I have been with you, caring for your flocks. And in all that time, your sheep and goats never miscarried. In all those years, I never used a single ram for food of yours for food. If any were attacked and killed by wild animals, I never showed you the carcass and asked you to reduce the count of your flock. No, I took the loss myself. You made me pay for every stolen animal, whether it was taken in broad daylight or in the dark of the night. I work for you through the scorching heat and through the cold and sleepless nights. Yes, 20 years I have slaved in your house. I worked for 14 years, earning your two daughters, and then six more years for your flock. And you changed my wages 10 times? In fact, if the God of my father had not been on my side, the God of Abraham, the fearsome God of Isaac, you would have sent me away empty handed. But God has seen your abuse and my hard work. That is why he appeared to you last night and rebuked you. So previously, the previous night, God had went to Laban because obviously went, he was trying to go after him and try to find uh, Jacob because he took he had taken his daughters and his stuff and he was trying to find him. But God had warned him not to mess with Jacob. And that lets us know that God always protects and looks out for his children. And the thing we and the thing I want to really help you guys to really understand, especially when it comes to this, is a few things. Late as we know, Laban was a idolatry. He was greedy. He was he was just he was a he was selfish. He was a liar. He was an idol worshiper. There were so many things he did. And it made and this is very important for employers to understand and also employees to understand, right? The importance of you, here's the thing, you reap what you sow. How you treat people matter because you will be done the same way. And the thing about it is, is this, Jacob was a lying too. He was, the, he was a deceiver too. Jacob means deceiver. What he did to Esau, he reaped what he sowed through what happened with Laban. But the thing is, is this, Laban cheated Jacob in many ways. He made him work for Rachel for another seven years. He made him, he, the thing is, he ended up, he ended up talking him into caring for his flock. He ended up having his sons take the spotted street and speckled goats and sheep. He ended up making him work in the hot sun. He ended up making him work in the cold. Even when there were, even if he had sleepless nights, he ended up paying him. He ended up making him pay for every stolen animal. He ended up changing the wages 10 times. He didn't even have, he didn't even give his daughters what was rightfully theirs. The thing is, those who are employers, take care of your employees. Don't over, don't do, don't do your employer, don't do your employees wrong. Employees work hard, no matter how much the job description says, no matter if you're overworked, because remember, you're working for God, not man. Work hard. Put forth your best effort, no matter how you're being paid. Be faithful to God. And when you're faithful to God, God will be faithful to you and he'll bless you in due season. A workman is worthy, worthy of his hire. So it's very important if somebody does a job for you, if somebody does something for you, take care of them. Be a blessing into someone's life because you always reap what you sow. God will honor your hard work, those who are employees. Don't cheat people, guys. Take care of those who've done something for you. Be blessed.